I know that's those young those youngins like landing them now. That's just what they do. But uh, I, I, youngins like Stephen. Stephen. Stephen was one of the number one culprits. Why don't we have that? And so <laughs> I, I don't have to give because you don't give me what <laughs> That's what he told me. And so uh, and so uh, we just use, we use it and, uh, and it, it works out pretty well for us. Um, so if you, if you feel comfortable doing that, please do that. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, that's why we pass baskets. Amen? Someone say amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit and I'll let you out of here. Okay? Um, it's summertime, sit back. Man, look at, look at everybody. I mean, it's summertime. You can tell. If you come here Wednesday night, you can tell it's summertime. Uh, kids are gone. Uh, they are grandmas, meemaws, papas, Pookie and them, they're everywhere. They, they're just gone. And uh, so, um, it's summertime. And in the summertime, people like to go play, amen? Amen. And that's all right. But I just want you to understand something that um, just because it's summertime doesn't mean you have to forget about the Lord. Um, we just continue to go forward with God, amen? Amen. Amen. Um, Proverbs 29, 18. Come on, Daniel. Fast. Let's go. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18. See how your skills are. Your brother's looking over your shoulder. Uh, look at that. Nathan was pressuring him. Got him. Okay. <laughs> Ready? There's no, there's no revelation that people are cast, they cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. Can you go King James on that for me, please? Thank you. Where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there's no vision, people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. What does that even mean? Where you don't know where you're going, you don't have any direction in your life, people perish. In this current generation, and I say current generation because I have three generations here tonight with us. These generations need a vision for everything in our lives. We need to see exactly where God is taking us. We need to know exactly what God has done for us. There's a lack of visionaries in our world. What's a visionary? Somebody who sees past their, their generation. Somebody who sees past just what they want. Somebody who sees past the generation that they are, they are currently in, but they see a generation that's yet to come. And, there, and at this time in our life, uh, there, there seems to be a lack of visionaries and leadership of our country. You know, it doesn't matter. I, I really don't care if you like Donald Trump or don't like Donald Trump. I, that doesn't make me lose a week of sleep. Don't care. And I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, or a liberal, or whatever, or a Libertarian. I don't care. I don't give two flips. Whatever flag is flying, which is the United States flag, that is the leadership that we're supposed to be under. Amen. Regardless of your opinion right now, um, it is the office of the president that is supposed to be honored. Amen. Not just the person. Because, boy, it got quiet. Didn't it? Yeah. That office is, is the important office. Yeah. That office is what directs our country. Yeah. I love, uh, Zane uh, gave me an old newspaper when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And I appreciate it, Zane. Thank you. Because I love that that memorabilia stuff and uh, John F. Kennedy said ask not what your country can do for you but what you can do for your country Amen. in January 20 1961 that's when he said that in the years that have passed the hope and the vision of the country eight, it was 8 years before my birth where is that kind of visionary now you would actually have the audacity to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. The audacity to ask, not for something from the government, 
but what can I do for my country? Wow. He wouldn't get elected now because he would be giving out free stuff. So he wouldn't get elected. See, somebody pays for the free stuff. Mm -hmm. Just letting you know. They take it every quarter from my pocket. And they distribute my money that I earned, that I sweated for, that I got up early for. Boy, it got quiet. But it's still the truth. Yeah. What I'm going to talk to you tonight about is walking with Christ in the family. See, God has an idea what family is and we don't have an idea what family is. It's different. Walking with Christ is more than simply going to church. More than reading a Bible. Walking with Christ is more than just naming myself a Christian. A lot of folks claim to be Christian but don't go to church. I, I don't know how that works, but they do that. It's be like I'm part of a club that I never attend. It'd be like I'm, I'm part of a family that I don't want to be part of. It would be like um, I work at a place that I don't ever go to. Can somebody help me? Yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a mason. Are you? You ever been there? No. Uh, are you a, uh, oh, I, I'm, a, I'm a worker. I work for Central Plastics. Oh, I didn't know that. How long you worked there? Well, I've never been. <laughs> but I claim myself to work for Central Plastics. I work for Enviro. Oh, do you? Where do you work? Well, I don't ever go. But I identify as an Enviro worker. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Okay. <laughs> Walking with Christ is much more than that. Walking with Christ involves... Everything in your life. See, I preached last Sunday night, and most of y'all don't even have a clue what I preached about. That's okay. I preached this morning, and some of you still don't know what I preached about this morning. And I preached my heart out this morning. I preached about the lost sheep and how God, how Jesus leaves the 99 because the one that repents, he rejoices over more than 99 who are already saved. And last, last Sunday, I preached about being a servant. Remember? I preached, I preached about a servant goes to sleep after who he serves and gets up before they serve. Before those who he serves. He prepares to serve. He lives to serve. Remember? Walking with Christ is all that and much more. Walking with Christ involves everything in your life. We talked about happiness or holiness last, and then in the weeks past, we talked about is it better to be holy or happy and all that stuff. We've talked about that. Some of us need to get a vision or the vision of God for our family. God needs to be the vision in our family. Some of your visions and expectations of your family, can I just be honest with you, stink. You expect to never have. You expect to barely make it. Well, that's the way mom and daddy did it. And that's the way grandma and grandpa did it. Well, is it time to break that cycle? I Amen. Think it is. Some of the expectations for your children stink. Some of the expectations of what you expect from God in your life stinks. You expect to barely make it for the rest of your life and die and they put you in a box or maybe they can't even do that. They, they cremate you because it's cheaper. That's not a high expectation. Some of the expectation that you have for your life is not what God expects for you. But you've lowered the expectation because it's easier. I'll, I'll get back up here. Sorry, Lord. Get a godly vision of what God wants for your family, what your family is supposed to be. Amen. What is a godly vision? What is a family? I'm so glad you asked. It's a group of relatives. A group of people who are closely related. Hang on. By birth, by marriage, or by adoption. We are included in God's family in all three ways. I'll get there in a minute. 
People living together, a group of people living together and functioning as a single household, usually consisting of parents and their children, lineage, all the people who were descendants from a common ancestor, offspring, a child, or set of children born to somebody. That is what a family is, according to Webster's Dictionary. What is a God-ordained God family? I'm so glad you asked. One man, one woman, getting married, joined together as one fleshing, having the fruit of that union, children. Can I share you this that most people don't want to hear anymore? God wants you to fall in love, get married, have children, and live the rest of your life with each other. That's what God expects. That's what God's expectations are for you. We get it all jacked up. And we mess it all up. We, we, turn, we, we transform it and change it. And because we don't want a piece of paper, which is what people say about a marriage license, which drives me <laughs> infuriated rage. My marriage is not a piece of paper. No. Nope. And for people that say that, that's just ignorance. Just say that. My marriage is a covenant between me and her. And that's what my marriage is. It's a covenant between me and her and God. It is not a piece of paper that I sign so that someone can take a picture of me signing it. That's not what it is. It simply says, uh, uh, there's a contract. Yeah, it's, it truly is a contract because everything that I own now is hers and everything she owns is mine. It's a legal contract. And it's true. However, it is a godly covenant with Him. It is, it, we stand before God and we say, yes, God, I'm going to marry her and live with her for the rest of my life. This, do things happen? Yes, things happen. Stuff blows up. I get that. I understand that. But what people don't want to hear anymore is this, is that, that, that there's a pattern to what God wants for our lives. And God's just not trying to mess up your fun. Well, God didn't want me to have sex with anybody until I get married. That's not fun. Excuse me. Excuse me. That is true. But there's a reason for that. Number one. Number one. It messes up your perspective of who that person is when you start laying down with them. Okay. Is that okay? I'm all right. Number two. It messes your emotions up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Number three, you don't know where they've been. Amen to that. Number four, <coughs> number four, it's not God ordained. Yeah. Are you back up here? You did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I brought my dream team t-shirt. Okay, listen. Listen. I, I can't help it. That's just how it is. That's, nobody wants to hear that anymore, though. They want you to celebrate whatever they're doing. Can't do it. Love you. Can't do it. What is a God-ordained family? One man, one woman married, joined together in, in, the, in the flesh and have fruit of their union. But listen. Frailty of the human body sometimes causes men and women not to be able to have children. That's not a curse on your union always, but it's a, it's a way for God to get some parents and some children without parents, I believe. Yeah. Yes. I have an adopted niece, and I have five adopted that my brother has. My brother has one, two, three, four, nine children. No, 11 with Sarah and Amy. He has 11 because he's nuts. Because okay? he's psycho. Okay? He's 63 years old and has 8 year olds because he's psycho. Okay, And so, whatever. His wife had two children when they got married. He had two children when they got married. They had two children together and they adopted five. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> wow. But I believe that those children needed a place to have a home, and they didn't have a home. They're, they are they, they needed a place to be, and God, God opened a way for them to, and, and how they do it, I don't know. I They would drive me insane. But I'm just letting you know that that's what they do. I have four, and four's enough. 
to share our house with love. Okay, and so uh, that's enough. <laughs> to care for the orphan, Jesus calls true religion. To care for the widows and the orphans, Jesus calls true religion. Don't get mad at God for, for not having children through natural birth, but look to God for a child that he needs to set aside for you. In Genesis 2 and 18, it says, it's not good for man to be alone. And I believe that. God knew that men need help. Amen. God knew men need some, need, I'm telling you, God knew men need someone to tell them what to do. My sister went and ate lunch with us today. And uh, I had the ticket that I was going to go pay for it. And she said, give me that. And I just handed it to her. And my wife said, uh, you should just pay for hers. And I said, well, she, as a girl told me to do something, I did it. I, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I don't know. And so and so my sister, she was going to pay for hers. I thought we should pay for her for a lunch because she's awesome. But uh, she she just said, give me that. And as a good as a good guy does, okay. You know, I mean, because we're afraid they're going to yell at us. And so we... Okay, okay. And so, here you go. And, but God knows that men sometimes need someone to boss them around. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you can't have a Superman without a Lois Lane. There's no Spider-Man without, Spider without Mary Jane. God made us in his image. And he didn't want us to be alone. So he knew that his man, this man he made in his image, wouldn't want to be alone either. The family of God is more than just simply people coming together in, a, in one same room. There's different stages of our lives. My marriage is different than, than most marriages and some marriages. I mean, they're not all the same. Uh, my, my marriage is hectic. It is. It would drive some of y'all over the brink because uh, it's just hectic. It's busy. Uh, we bought my, my wife got a van February of last year and has forty thousand miles on it already. So in, in, we we drive, we do stuff, we're gone. Like one day I was just just looking and just thinking. I pulled in my house four times in one day. Four times in an, in an hour and a half, two hour period. I thought, this is just crazy. But my, but my life, my, our marriage would drive some of y'all nuts. But your marriage would bore me to death. It would. You mean you get home and sit and watch TV? Okay, that's fun. Uh, and so, but that, that wouldn't be fun for me. So married, we're all in different stages of our life. So listen, some are married, some are married, some are single, some are divorced, some are separated, some are divorced with, and remarried. Some, some are y'all maybe living with somebody, sleeping with somebody, friends with benefits, whatever. You're all in different stages of your life. But we all need to know what God says about the family and how to live by his, his definition. The traditional family is this, a father, mother, children, and marriage. That is tra traditional marriage. A non-traditional mixed marriage. Is some from one marriage, some from another marriage. Marriage with adopted children, living together with children. Some of us in that area. Whatever, whatever stage you're in, God has called you to walk with Christ. He called the family to walk with Christ. To be part of the family, you have to be brought into by the bloodline. In 1 Peter 1, 18, 18 through 21. 1 Peter 1. 18 for 21. Get there, Daniel. Go on. Yeah. There you go. All right. For as much as you are, are we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. Receive tradition of your fathers. Keep going. Keep going. Where am I going to? 21. But the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. That's one. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. I'm brought into the family of God through the blood of Christ. I'm blood with Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are blood. We're family. But so are you. Isn't that cool? Yep. He cannot get rid of me. 
I'm blood family. How many have family you wish you could get rid of? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Yeah, some family that you don't say is their family. They're, oh, that's, yeah. Uh, and that, 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 that embarrass you. I'm, I'm in the family of God by marriage in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 27. Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I'm family because I'm married into the family. I'm blood family and I'm married into the family. Isn't that cool? How about adoption? I'm so glad you asked. John chapter 1 verse 12. John 1 and 12. We're getting there. Thank you. But as many as received him, to them he gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. He, those that received him, he gave them power to become his sons. That's adoption. Galatians chapter 4, 5 through 7. Galatians 4, 5 through 7. I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture, but I want you to get it in your spirit. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. 6. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into the hearts cry, Abba, Father. So. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let me just ask you something tonight. If you're in, if you're in the family three different ways, you are, you are blood bought. You are bought by the blood. You have the blood of the lineage of Christ. You are married into the, the, into the family of Christ. And you are adopted into the family of Christ. There's no way that you can say that I'm not part of the family of God. If you are saved this evening, you are bought by the blood of Christ. You have His blood running through your veins. You are, the, you are married into his, into his family. And you are adopted into His family. If you are saved today, you are not simply on your own. But you have a family called the family of God. That's, a, that's what it's called. We are called to walk with Christ not as mindless zombies but as adopted children into the family of God. I'm not a mindless zombie. I, can, I do have my own opinions, but this is true, that I am adopted children of God, chosen by His grace, saved by His blood, and placed in His family by His Spirit. There's nothing that any, the devil can do about it. He can't remove me from the family of God. Are you guys with me tonight? I know it's, I know it's getting later, and I know we're, we're, we're hanging out tonight, just a little bit of us tonight, but this, uh, stand with me just a little bit. Get with me just a little bit. Listen, I'm chosen by His grace. I'm saved by His blood. I'm placed in His family by His Spirit. We can only walk with Him when we are blood kin, but blood bought. We are blood bought. We're blood kin. I've got paper sticking together. There. We're part of His church. My God, I'm His part of his bride of Christ. We're part of the bride of Christ. I've received the spirit of adoption. Romans 8, 15 through 16. I've received the spirit of adoption. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. With me? Thank you. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16. The spirit itself bear with us, with our spirit, that we are the children of of God. Who are you tonight? Children. You're the child of God. You're a child of God. Listen, won't you, be, won't you be part of the family of God? Won't you stand up and be part of His family? Won't you be what God has called you to be? Won't you stand up and not let the devil explain to you what you are, but you tell the devil exactly who you are. Listen, as messed up as we are, as the problems that we have in our life, and the things that still, that still haunt us in our past, those things, everything that we have laid aside for Christ and we have trouble and we have things that we do and we try not to pick them up but we still pick them up. We still have issues that we have to deal with. As jacked up as we are, we're still part of His family. Amen. Amen. None of us that have children here, if you sign the birth certificate, you're their parent. You can try. You can you can extinguish your rights or whatever. You can whatever relinquish your life. 
right? You can sign that baby over. But you still, ladies, birthed that child. Mm -hmm. And sir, you still made that child. That child will still have your DNA. Yep. Regardless of what the legal things were. Regardless if you signed over a piece of paper or not, that baby still has your DNA. Yeah. Yep. You sit here today. And maybe some of you haven't felt like you're part of a family of God. I don't know. Maybe some of you don't feel like God really cares about you. He cares about other people more than you. That's a lie. That's a lie. Now sometimes we do that because we make bad choices. We decide to walk away from what God's doing in our lives. We say, ah, you know, God, I know, I understand what everything you did for me, and I appreciate that, but I really don't care. And we walk away. Your children have the right to walk out of your life if they want to. Do they not? There's people you may not have spoken to your parents in years. They're still alive. Maybe there's cousins you haven't talked to in years. Relatives that you got mad at in 1976 because you wanted to have the bicentennial celebration at your house and they wanted it at theirs. And you got mad in 1976 and haven't talked to them since. Because you're, you had you had better watermelon than they had. <laughs> Nobody cared. Your ice cream your ice cream maker was automatic and not a crank kind, and they didn't even care. I have more kids to sit on it. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Come sit on this! Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. If you grew up in Oklahoma, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to sit on Shut up, sit on it. I'm back for we're nice to kids. I mean, so that's just how, that's how it went. So maybe you've been upset with somebody in your family for a very long time. Don't you think it's funny how we get so upset and we don't think that God should ever be upset with us about anything? Well, He just knows how I am. Possible. Well, He just He understands me. Yeah, I, I get that He understands you, but there's things in your life that you need to deal with. You understand? That we need to deal with sin in our lives. And we need to walk away from sin and not just say, well, God understands I do that. That's not accurate. That's not scriptural at all. That's just somebody who doesn't want to hurt your feelings and tell you that if you continue to do that, you're going to wind up in a devil's hell. And there's nothing that I can do about that. There's nothing nobody can do about that but you. Because if you continue to sin after that you know that's not right. And you continue to choose that. I didn't say you're fighting against it, you're, you're struggling against it. I didn't say that. I said you willfully do it. You understand this wrong and you willfully do it. That's what Hebrews says. After you come to the knowledge of the truth and you willfully sin, there remains no more sacrifice for that sin. The book of Hebrews says. I believe it's 10, 30, 6. I didn't write it. I just read it. And that's what he says. But be part of the family of God. Okay. I gotta say this one. I'm gonna leave you alone pretty early tonight. Is that okay? I guess not. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna keep talking. It's okay. I'm gonna leave you with this pretty quick. The Bible says all souls belong to the Lord. Amen. Because the devil can't make a soul. But not all souls are children of God. Because not everybody says yes to the Lord. Well, that went over great. You have a decision to make with your soul that belongs to God. You can either give your soul, give your life to the Lord, or you can choose not to. That's up to you. I've gotten a lot better at telling God, hey God, your people are crazy, I'm going home. <laughs> and leaving it there. Because I've, I've found 
and that there's nothing I can do to change some of your minds. That I found there's nothing, I can't give you enough. I can't like you enough. I can't love you enough, hug you enough, high five you enough to make you change. And that's okay. Because you're going to have to do it for yourself. Brother Darrell, I've, I've taken the scripture to heart to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Brother Darrell, you can't save nobody. And I can't either. As many lifelines as we throw out, they have to choose to grab it. As many helicopters as we send to get you off that flooded house, you actually have to get on the helicopter. I can't save you. I can just bring you to the one who came. I can propose to you Jesus and Him alone and what He does in your life, but I can't save you. I can't save your relatives. I can't save my own kids, my own wife, my own family. I have nothing to do with that. This is what I have to do with it. Jesus said if you will come to Him. Jesus said if I would lift Him up, He would draw all men to Him. He didn't say lift, lift me up and draw men to me. He said if I would lift Him up, He would draw all men to Him. Amen. That's what the Scripture says. So if I continue to lift Him up, I have to believe because the Word of God says that He will draw. I've got to believe that. Amen. I can't do it. As good as I am. <laughs> I can't do it. I just can't. I can't hang on a cross for you. I can't heal you. I can't do any of that for you. And Jesus didn't ask me to. He did all that already. The cool thing about Jesus is that he will never die again. That's right. They'll never beat him again, Sister Nam. They will never whip him again. They'll never hang him on a cross again. He's already done it. And he's not doing it again. The church, if you're going to be the family of God, you've got to buy in. You've got, to be, you've got to become His family. You've got to be bought by blood. You've got to be adopted as sons. You have to. You have to. And you have to be the bride of Christ and be part of a church body. See, I don't buy the undercover self-Christian that never immerses himself in a body of Christ. I don't, I don't buy it. Yeah, you can say it and it sounds all spiritual. And yeah, you can say it, and you can say it with conviction. But the truth of the matter is that God has set up the church to support you, to help you, and to help you to help teach you. He didn't set He didn't set you up because the Bible says what? It's not. Oh, here, here my God voice. It's not good for man to be alone. <laughs> it's not good for you to walk this walk, walk by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. You have to have a church family. Amen. You do. Amen. I don't care if you hate half the people in it. You still have to have one. You have to have a church family that loves you even though you're mad at them. That helps you even though they, that you haven't helped nobody do nothing. But they're going to help you. They're going to teach you. They're going to train you. They're going to walk with you through your, through your sad times in your life. And they're going to celebrate with you in your happy times in your life. You can't walk this walk by yourself. I don't care what some slick haired, shiny shoe, need to sell a book preacher told you. It doesn't happen that way. We're called the family of God for a reason. We're all from different backgrounds and different parents and different everything else. But we have to be part of a family of God. Amen. If you don't believe that, Find somebody who's not part of one and they're weird. <laughs> they are. Here a vision, there a vision, and we're a vision, vision. And they're not really following after Christ. They're not. They try to. 
but they don't have anybody to be accountable to. Is that okay, Brother Darrell? Am I doing all right? Come on. Okay. The body of Christ makes you accountable. Because if you're not here, someone goes, hey, where were you at? <laughs> you should. Hey, we missed you. Hey, I'm sorry you weren't here. What was going on? Were you sick? Was something going on? Did you have a water leak? Did something happen? I mean, did something blow up? I mean, what happened? We missed you. Oh, I just didn't want to come. Well, I'm praying for you. Because if you didn't want to come, then there's something going on in your life. If you don't want to be in the house of God, there's something going on in your life. I just promise you that. Oh, now, Brother Jeff, that's not true. Yes, it is true, because I've been on both sides of this fence. Yeah. And when, when you don't want to be there, there's something going on in your life that's tearing you apart from the family of God. I'm quitting with this one. Church family, don't let people take you out of the hand of God. Don't let people make you jump. Don't make, don't make people make you leave because... They're talking in your ear. Maybe they have real meaning. But most times when people are whispering in your ear, it's not a good thing. I love Derek, Brother Daryl tells a story. <laughs> I'm going to tell off on your Brother Daryl just because I love you. Brother Daryl tells a story. Tell me, tell me a story one day. He said, he said, I am behind my pastor. I am behind him. I'm behind him. I'm telling you. And somebody called me and said, I'm going to tell you something, but I want you to tell the pastor. He said, just wait right there. Anything you tell me, I'm telling my pastor. She said, okay, we're just going to give him a surprise birthday party, but whatever. <laughs> he said, okay, I'll keep that from you. <laughs> I love that story. I love that story. I just went right there. He was all spiritual. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> and we're just going to give him a surprise party. And so I, just, I love that story. Anyway, don't let people whisper in your ear. What does the family of God do for you? Supports you, helps you, loves you, keeps you, stand here for you.